Alrighty, hello there mathematicians. Today's objective is students will be able to simplify expressions using order of operations. Alrighty, get that down. Okay. I'm going to totally change your life forever. And this is no insult to your middle school math teachers. But many of you, and you don't have to write this down, okay? I'm just going to write over this again. Do not write this down. Many of you learn something like this. That was, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Right, you probably remember this. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay, parentheses, or I just gave it away. P stood for parentheses. E stood for what? Exponents. M stood for multiplication. D stood for what? Division. A for addition. And S for subtraction. Okay, so this is the way a lot of you guys learn order of operations. I'm going to tell you now, this is dead wrong. Okay? We will never, ever, ever use PEMDAS again. In fact, if we hear you say PEMDAS, that's like a cuss word to us. Okay, never again. And let me explain to you why. If I give you, again, and you guys don't have to do this, okay, you're just watching for right now. If I give you the problem 30, um, let's see, 30 divided by 3 and then times 5. Okay, the way that you learn this was, oh, first I do parentheses. There aren't any, so you cross it out. Then I do exponents. Well, there are none. Then I do multiplication, right? This is the way you guys learned it, okay? So it would have been, first you have to do the 3 times 5, okay, which is 15. You bring down the 30 divided by, and then you were taught to do division, right? Division after multiplication. So 30 divided by 15 is equal to 2. Now, I want you to put this in on your calculator. 30 divided by 3 times 15. Now, if you don't have your calculator right beside you, go get it. Hit pause and go get it. 30 divided by 15, uh, or I'm sorry, 30 divided by 3 times 5. When you do that on your calculator, you get a different number. You don't get 2, you get 50. Okay, there's a reason for that, and that reason is why PEMDAS is wrong. Again, we will not use PEMDAS again. Okay, so let me erase some of this because now we're going to get started on today's notes. Again, if we hear you say the word PEMDAS, you're in trouble. Never, ever, ever want to hear it again. No more Aunt Sally. You guys probably didn't have an Aunt Sally. All right. The new thing that we do, okay, now that you're in high school. So PEMDAS work for really easy problems, simple problems. But it doesn't work for more uh, complicated high school problems, okay. So we have a thing, it's called GEMDAS. Instead of P, we have G. And the reason why is G stands for grouping symbols, okay. So grouping symbols, okay. Now, obviously, parentheses is one type of grouping symbol, but you have all kinds of other types. Again, you guys should be getting this down with me now. You have brackets that look like that. You have brackets that look like that. These are on your computer. Okay. Um, another important one. Okay, get this down. The fraction bar. So write down, you guys should have a little bit more room than me, because I have to write a little bit bigger. Fraction bar. That is a grouping symbol. And what I mean by that is you have to do everything that's in the numerator and everything, simplify everything in the denominator before you can actually divide those. Okay? Um, we'll learn this in Unit 7, but also the absolute value bars. So the two bars here uh, mean absolute value. Those are a type of grouping symbol. Okay? Uh, next, we have exponents. E stands for exponents. You probably already knew that. 
Now, exponents can look like a lot of different things. Let's just go through a few quick. 3 squared is 3 times 3. Um, a squared is equal to a times a. Uh, let's see. Here's, here's one that will get a lot of you guys. If we do something like uh, 4 plus 1 squared, okay, what do you have to do first? Well, you have to do inside these grouping symbols first. So this is equal to 4 plus 1 is 5 squared, and then 5 squared is 5 times 5, which you know would simplify to be 25. Okay. Now, here's the big difference with Jimdas. Okay. Do you see how we have this MD side by side? What you're going to put over that is an arrow. Okay. And the reason why is this. You guys learn to do multiplication first with PEMDAS. That's what you learn to do. Multiplication before division. Erase that from your memory. You do not necessarily do multiplication before division. Okay. What you do, and let's get this down. So multiplication. And you guys, again, you guys should be writing a lot smaller than me. Or division. And I'm going to abbreviate. You guys write out the word division. Okay. And here's the key. You work left to right. Again, you work left to right. Okay. Same with addition and subtraction. Okay. So this is addition or subtraction. Okay. And again, you work left left to right. Okay? So that's Jimdas. That's what we'll be using the rest of the year. Okay? Now, the most important thing about all this is knowing when to use order of operations. Jimdas just tell us tells us the order in which we should do operations, okay? Okay. We use Whenever, so when do we use order of operations, or Jim does? We use with expressions. Remember, expressions do not have an equal to sign. So we use with expressions when simplifying uh, and Here's the key right here. More than one operation. Okay, more than one operation. That's the key to this. All right. So if we go down and get started on example one, the first thing that we're going to do, so if we look at this, we see an expression. Remember, expressions do not have equal to signs. Okay, this one does not have an equal to sign. And we see more than one operation. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Okay. Again, there's more than one operation. We have this addition. We have then this dot is kind of a typo. It should be a dot in the middle of the two. So then we have multiplication there, and then we have another addition. That's more than one operation. Therefore, we need to use Jimdas. Okay. Now I'm just going to say this once. On every single problem where you use Jimdas. You need to write it out. Okay. Now I want you to time me at home. You're gonna time me how long it takes me to write out Jim does. Now remember, timing is seconds are one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand. Okay. So right when I start writing, you're going to time me. Ready? Go. One thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, four one thousand. Here's why I had you do that. Okay. I've heard from students in the past, oh, Mr. Irwin, that takes way too long to write out Jim does. It takes four seconds, five seconds max. Okay, It doesn't take too long, and it will help you get it correct. I mean, if you look at this page alone, how much extra time will it take you to write out Jim does? Well, there are four problems times four seconds. I'll even give you five. Four times five seconds would be 20 extra seconds. Trust me, you have that to get the problem right. Okay, So... Here's why we write it out, because we're going to go through it. Okay, are there any grouping symbols? The answer, no. 
cross it out. Are there any exponents? Answer, no, cross it out. So this is just kind of a checklist for us. All right, is there any multiplication or division? And the answer is, yeah, there's only multiplication. So here's how your work should look. We need to just show that, hey, we're just multiplying 2 times 3 first. We're going to rewrite that 3 plus because we didn't do anything with it. And then 2 times 3 is 6. And then rewrite the plus 5. The key with order of operations is just do one step at a time. One simple step at a time. Okay, Our work, um, and we'll see it on the other ones, should kind of form a nice funnel because they'll be nice and organized. Okay, Now we're done with multiplication or division. Okay, Those are done. Now we go on to addition or subtraction, working left to right. So the first six or um, three plus six is nine, and then plus five. And we could do you know nine plus five, or this one's pretty simple. Three plus six is nine, plus five is fourteen. Circle your final answer. Okay. All right. Let's go on to the next one. Example two. You should be writing out Jim Dawes quickly right beside this, and do not forget the arrows above the MD and the AS. Those arrows just remind you, hey, work left to right. Okay? All right, let's do this one. So, starting off, are there any grouping symbols? The answer is no. Are there any exponents? The answer is yes, there are. Down right here, right? This four squared. So, we're just going to rewrite everything else. 15 divided by 3 plus 5 minus 4 squared is 16. Okay. Done with exponents. Is there any multiplication or division? The answer is yes. There's division, right? 15 divided by 3 is 5. Rewrite everything else. 5 plus 5 minus 16. Okay. Any more multiplication or division? Nope. Okay. Addition and subtraction. Yeah. And we work left to right. So 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 minus 16 will give me negative 6. And you notice my work forms a nice organized funnel. Okay, All of your work should look the same. All right, if you have any questions, make sure you write those down. All right, example three. Write it out quick, Jim Dawes, go. Okay, done. Any grouping symbols? The answer is yes, there's a five inside parentheses, but can you simplify just a five inside parentheses at all? The answer is no, you can't do anything with that. So we'll leave it, but you can't do anything with it. Okay. And then, oh, there's some more grouping symbols. Four plus three, we can simplify that. So we're going to rewrite everything else just the way we saw it. Two parentheses, five plus three. Parentheses, four plus three is seven. Okay. Now, can we do anything inside the grouping symbol with seven? The answer is no, we can't simplify seven. Are there any exponents? Nope. Multiplication or division? The answer is yes. We have numbers touching each other, right? Two is touching five, so that's multiplication, which is ten. Plus three times seven, they're touching, so that's multiplication. Three times seven is twenty-one. Ten plus twenty-one is thirty-one. Okay, again, if you have questions, make sure you jot them down and hit pause and jot them down. Okay, example four. We're going to get a key point on this one. Okay, if you look at this one, we have brackets and then more parentheses inside of those brackets. Okay, Here's the key point. First of all, let's uh, get down Jim Dawes here. So G-E-M-D, written sideways with the arrow, A-S. Again, the arrows remind us we work left to right when we get to multiplication or division. The key point is this. Okay, and write small, KP, is that we start over with, and let's just write Jim Dawes, inside grouping symbols. Okay, we're going to start over. So you see these brackets right here, the outside brackets? It's like, okay, well, i got to start with those. Once we're inside those now, you have to start over with Jim does. So we start back at the top. Are there any 
grouping symbols inside our brackets. And it says yes, 30 times 6, right? So we're going to rewrite everything else. So we have 2 brackets, 5 plus 30 times 6, let's see, 3 times 6 is 18, 180. Okay. Keep your parentheses because we still have the 30 times 6. We just simplified inside those parentheses and got it down to 180. Okay, and then we have the squared and then the brackets on the outside. Okay, all right, 180 squared. If I do 180, and then on your calculator, you guys, it's the there's a button. Um, let's see, it's uh, just above and to the left of seven. That looks like this. So on this one, I would punch in 180. Um, that button that looks like that, and then two, and that'll be 180 raised to the second power. It equals, make sure you get, looks like 32,400. So I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to come over here to give myself more room. So two brackets, five plus. Now 180 squared is 32,400. Keep the brackets. Okay. Now, can you still simplify inside the answer? Yes, absolutely you can. Okay, five plus 32,400. So it would be, keep the brackets, would be 32,000. 405. Again, keep the brackets. Okay. Now, you have a number touching brackets. What does that mean if a number is touching the brackets? Well, it means multiplication. So I got to do 32,405 times 2, and that will get me, it looks like, 6, 64,810. Okay. That would be your answer. Okay, last example I think we're going to do in this video is this fraction. Now, with fractions, I always like to show my work off to the side of the fraction. So I'm actually going to write Jim Dawes over here real quick. And again, you notice it doesn't have to be real fancy. It's just to help us out. Okay. Now remember, grouping symbols. Fractions are a grouping symbol. So this is where we have to simplify everything in the numerator, the top of the fraction, and simplify everything in the denominator, the bottom of the fraction. Okay, so let's start over with Jim does in the numerator. Well, we have addition and exponents. What do we gotta do first? Well, we gotta do the four squared first. So this would be six plus four squared is sixteen. Over. Uh, let's see. We have multiplication and two exponents here. So we gotta do the exponents. Three squared will give you. 9. Again, on your calculator, punch in the 3 squared button. And then times 4 to the third power. Well, let's see. 4 times 4 is 16. Times another 4 would give us 64. Oops, I wrote that wrong. That should be 64. Okay. Again, I like to keep going sideways as long as possible. Are we done simplifying the numerator or denominator? No. 6 plus 16 will give us 22. And then 64 times 9 will give us, uh, let's see, I think 576. Okay. Now, you should try to reduce that on your calculator. And this one, I, you definitely will be able to because they're both even numbers. So I know 2 goes into both. So you can punch in uh, 22 fraction 576 or 22 divided by 576. Hit equals. Um, if it gave you a decimal, make sure you convert it back to a fraction. So 22 uh, divided by 576 equals, I convert that back to a fraction, equals 11. Let's see, again, that was 11 over 288. Okay. And that's simplified all the way. Okay, for homework, as part of these video notes, you need to write out Jim Dawes by the next three problems, use it, and simplify the next three problems in the notes here. So again, when you come to class, those need to be done. Remember, follow each step, do one step at a time, and really organize your work. Okay, we look forward to seeing what you can do on these. We'll do some whiteboard practice when you get to class.